Cindy Orland. We're in the ASUG News Studio, sponsored by NTT Data. And I'm joined right now by Heon Park of Blue Hill Research and John Myers of Enterprise Management Associates. And these are two expert analysts in the SAP community, and we're going to break down some of the news from the show. Thanks for joining me, gentlemen. Thank you for So, Heon, what's the big takeaway from Bjorn's keynote, from Steve's keynote? What's the major news you're taking away this week? You know, what's really interesting from these keynotes combined is that SAP has really shown a vision for the HANA platform. And this has been confusing for everybody involved because uh, HANA, HANA, HANA has been thrown around as a word so many times that you wonder, is it for analytics? Is it for your applications? Is it just a place where you put your data? Is it just to speed things up? What the heck is this HANA stuff? And this has been, an an this has been a question that they've really been answering uh, very deeply and by showing exactly how they're going to put HANA into the cloud more deeply, how they're going to deal with it in terms of applications, how you're going to be able to build applications on it, and showing proof points from vendors that are actually outside of the SAP ecosystem, uh, such as Burst and such as SaaS, that are going to be starting to use this stuff more often. So what's the headline, John? Have we moved from what the heck is this HANA stuff to we can actually use this HANA stuff now? Well, the, the takeaway that I got was a little different than his is that in terms of, I like the time to implementation. I mean, I, there, there's some very important platform adjustments that were announced over the last couple of days, but what I liked is the ability not just to get the platform up and running, but as you pointed out, how do we put them into an ecosystem and how do we get value out of those platforms in a short amount of time? So it's not just, it's not just features and functions or speeds and feeds, but it is in fact, how do we get usable solutions into the hands of people in, in as fast a time as possible? You know, that's an excellent point. And do you think that there's been enough uh, pushes and changes made to make this more or less cost prohibitive for the customer community? So I think there's a couple things going on. On the one hand, uh, when you look at HANA for startups, uh, SAP is definitely very affordable. At the same time, SAP still has its uh, enterprise application uh, foundation. Uh, obviously, when you talk about what it takes to empower an application all the way through an enterprise, it's never a cheap uh, uh, a value proposition. Uh, you're always going to have to pay for it. So uh, I think SAP has to balance that very carefully, figure out what they're going to provide for free or at a very low cost versus what are they going to keep uh, providing at a high cost. Because at, at the end of the day, their business, their stock, uh, they've got to uh, retain their market cap. Uh, people worry about things like uh, what kind of revenue comes into your organization and SAP needs to figure out how to bifurcate uh, its uh, cheap products from its expensive products and then uh, continue to support value across uh, all of those areas. John, you look at a lot of different vendors, we should mm -hmm. point out, not just SAP when it comes to in-memory technology. In terms of what Hian was talking about here, how does SAP stack up? Well, I think it's very impressive what they're trying to do. Um, when we talk about the economics that we were just discussing, we were looking at both that time to value, like how much headcount does it take me to implement what I'm doing, how many licenses does it take for me to do that, in addition to what, are the, what is the cost of the products that we see. Um, I'm liking what HANA's doing in terms of some of the tiering that was announced as part of SPS 09, where you're talking about not just using a, a, an in-memory platform, but being able to use in-memory and spinning disk, the connectivity to, to Hadoop that allows you to use commodity hardware in that area as well. So I like that from a perspective of the economics that are coming together and how SAP is allowing organizations to pull multiple structures together into one platform or one access point of a platform and make it available. That's an excellent point. Do you think that there's a good understanding, and I'll toss this to either of you, amongst the customer base of the different HANA products, HANA Enterprise Cloud, HANA Cloud Platform, what do you think? Uh, honestly, these sound very uh, similar to me, and I think that's a, still a big problem uh, with the end user community, uh, trying to figure out exactly how to sort all of these different options out. Yeah, and, and I would agree. The differences between the HANA Enterprise Cloud and the HANA uh, cloud, for plat cloud Platform, pulling those together, I mean, they're, they're directed to two different gr groups of people, not necessarily two different use cases, but two different, different groups of people. And I think there's still some confusion in the marketplace about where do you use each piece and how do you use them effectively? Yeah, and just to add to that, with SPS09, now that it's supporting multi-tenancy, which is uh, what we think about as a very core cloud capability, 
uh, you start wondering, are they going to have to add yet another name to this, or are they going to start clarifying which cloud is actually cloud and which cloud is, say, private or hybrid or uh, meant for some other uh, form of cloud? That's something I did not consider. So what do you think, if you had to sum up to kind of close out here, what's the one headline from TechEd this year? I think it's that HANA platform is well-defined and ready for the enterprise. I would say it's time to implementation. From configuration to development to, to implementation, it's getting you on a path of being able to have what you want to get out of these systems in the short amount of time possible and with as few resources as possible as well. Great gentlemen, thank you for joining me and sharing your expertise. Hope you have a great show. Thanks so much for watching and for more customer stories and news, please turn to ASUG.com and ASUGnews.com.